War had raged through all Aventasia. The alliance of humans, elves, and dwarves fought against the evil army of the shadows. The war had devastated the country for years upon years, and yet, no one gained the advantage. And so it was that in that time of deepest despair, that an old archaeologist uncovered the location of the artifact of divine fate. The artifact could fulfill every wish, and thus decide the war, for one side or the other. Led by warlock Monkus, son of Archwitch Mortroga, the shadows hunted for the artifact. And they would have reached it first, were it not for a group of heroes who stood against them. Wilbur, the young gnome who was the first of his clan to become a mage. Ivo, the courageous elven prince, and the... Who should... Good, good, this is good. Although the ground is still getting closer. Part of the jetty. At least some of it survived the explosion. If I'm lucky, this will go all the way up to the island. <laughs> but somehow I really doubt it will. For now, could it be that your spell? I did tip. Risks? What? No. It like? Nope. Nope. What? Let me. What? Benny! Ah! Stay easy. A flying carpet! Is that too much to ask? I'm not talking to you. Why, you... Uh, I'm sorry, I... Uh, uh, well, oh. Carp... Hmm? Yes! Heck? What happened here? No! Oh! Welcome, adventurer. I am the tutorial, guardian of gameplay, explainer of controls. Use the left stick to move the character.
Well done. If you walk up to an object, context-sensitive actions will be displayed. Walk up to that big lever and press A. The robot has used the lever, as this seemed logical to him. Now press B so that the robot looks at the lever rather than uses it. Excellent. The robot thinks the lever is working. But if that's so, then where is the problem? That hatch over there, walk up to it and press A. The little chap seems to think there are advanced engine mechanics hidden behind there. Perhaps that's where the problem is. Press A again, next to the hatch. The first time you press A will allow you to look, the second to use. Why? Because after a player character has looked at something, the most logical thing to do next is use it. It's quite simple. Press B when you want to look at something. Press A in order to do whatever that character thinks is the next most sensible move. Is the machine working again? Walk up to the lever and press A. Here, take a closer look at the engine. Oops, that wasn't very helpful. Please pick up both gears by pressing A. If you can reach several objects from one position, you can use the right stick to select the one you want to interact with. Great work! Items you pick up will go into your inventory. You open and close your inventory by pressing Y. To use an inventory item, select it with A, and then select the object that you want it to be used with. Use one of the gears in your inventory with the engine of the town model. Excellent. Now how about dealing with the second gear? Perfect. You'd better oil the engine before you switch the machine back on again. That should do it. Time to crank it up. Examine objects in the inventory in more detail. Pick up the damaged figure and the toolbox. Then open the inventory with Y and press B in order to examine the toolbox. Great! You found a few items in the toolbox. You can use these items on each other by initially selecting the first object with A 
and then using it on the second object again with A. Try to repair the figure in the inventory. Well done. Now place the figure back in its rightful place on the bow. Adventures in the Book of Unwritten Tales 2. I'm worried about you. Oh, Mother. What's wrong with you? Everything's fine. No. You don't look well at all. Positively rotund. It is unseemly for an elf princess to cope with her frustrations by comfort eating. If you carry on like this, you won't fit into your wedding dress. I don't have any intentions of marrying any time soon. Oh, darling, we've been through that already. Prince Lalilos is going to be arriving next week. You will like him. He's charming, and look, he sent us a picture of himself and his sister. Um, which of the two is the sister? The elf nobility, unfortunately, has not got any unshaven Neanderthals to offer. You'll just have to get used to that. I don't have the slightest interest in that person. Not anymore. You are at the heart of the elf kingdom, in the castle of your family where you belong. No one here should be sad, tired, or fat. I only want what's best for you, Ivo. Yes, only what's best for me. She always says that. Have you seen this, Prince? A vain river elf who's only interested in topping up his tan. I'm to spend hundreds of years in the company of someone I don't love. Huh, not me. And how? She will try anything and everything. Nothing's more important to her than getting me married off. When I was out there with the humans, it was the first time that I had the feeling I could determine my own destiny. Yes, it was dangerous. Doesn't that go with the territory? A life without risk, that is so... so... Oh, you don't understand. If I could, I would go right now. You want to stop me? <laughs> Just like last time. I didn't want to tell Mother, but I've not been feeling too well lately, Cheap. I'd say the same thing, but we elves hardly ever get ill. Yeah, you've got a point there. I spent almost a year in the human world, and they have some very strange ideas about personal hygiene. Well, I thought, perhaps it's a curse. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take care of it myself. Mother would make a state occasion out of it. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's a medical book down in the library. No, rest is not what I need just now. 
I'll go down to the library and look up what's wrong with me, completely alone, just like a grown-up elf. I'm not going to be stopped, neither by locked doors nor by you. Cheap Cheap survived our past adventure, even if he'll insist on exactly the opposite. He told everyone for months how he defended me from all the evils of the world and then only just escaped with his tail feathers intact. Hey, Cheap. Most birds love a mirror because they believe they can see another bird in it. You just love them because you can't get enough of yourself. I would be a bit less unbearable if I wasn't incarcerated in here. See you later. Yes, of course I'll be a good girl and stay in my room. Fresh water from the spring brook, the little stream that rises here in the castle and provides for the whole valley. People come from far and wide to drink it. Normally this bowl is full of fruit and nuts. Presumably Mother has decided I should be without such things whilst I am, as she says, positively rotund. I've been sleeping badly of late and sometimes I feel tired all day long. I've never been ill, but something isn't right. I hope I'll find the answer in the library. When Nate and the others lived here, Nate often made intimations that were to do with the bed. I don't know why, but I know Mother wasn't happy about it. She moved him to a guarded guest room at the other end of the castle. And Cheap Cheap was ordered never to leave my side. A beautiful red flower. It was only put here a few days ago. Sometimes Mother orders a new plant that looks nice in my room. And then it's replaced and planted in the garden. Hmm, a delicate sweet scent. It reminds me of a wood over in the west where I learnt to use a bow and arrow. An envoy from the Far East gave me this musical box years ago. Wherever I go, I always have its tune in my head. A guard with a spear and shield, and like all elven figures, immaculate. I had my birthday during the few weeks that we spent living together here in the elf burrow. That was a big deal for Wilbur. He couldn't understand that the significance of birthdays tends to fade after a few hundred years. He insisted on making me a present. He sat in the corner for days knitting me this hat with his little gnarled fingers. Wilbur didn't know that autumn would last for years to come and that elves don't feel the cold, but it was still the best birthday present I've ever had. Mother looked at the hat with so much revulsion that I didn't take it off for days. Wilbur just beamed with pride. The times when the others were here in the elf burrow, those were the best that I've ever had. The critter could never keep still when I was drawing him. He was always pulling faces and trying to make me laugh. Wilbur was so excited. He loves elves and our stories. He spent hours sitting with my father and listening to him talk about bygone ages. Complete idiot. Cheap, cheap.
Cheap Cheap likes to look at his reflection. He strikes a pose and then tries to impress himself with it and succeeds most of the time. My jewellery box serves as a podium for the vertically challenged narcissist. If I'm to get out of this room, I'll have to trick him. Mother's orders are sacrosanct to him. I used to look into the woods for days on end, imagining what the world beyond would be like. Now I know, and I think I miss it. I've seen much suffering, much evil and unkindness in the world out there, but it was exciting. It was alive. Here in the Elf Burrow, everything is so ordered, so perfect, so dull. One day's just like the next, and they just pass by endlessly. One can almost see the edge of the wood through the telescope, but I just can't leave the elf burrow. Mother would never forgive me, and there are so many dangers lurking out there. We have many exotic plants here in the palace, but sunflowers are my favorite. Apologies, I need a few of your seeds. Cheap Cheap, would it be possible for you to stop admiring yourself for two seconds and move over to stuffing your beak instead? Don't say I never look after you. Pearls, precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. All the stuff I have to wear at official functions. If it were up to Mother, I would have trunkfuls of this stuff, and a wing of the castle would be my wardrobe. She just can't understand why Pa and I aren't into this sort of thing. Withdrawal symptoms? I just need the music box a minute. You don't need to turn your head away from your beautiful reflection for one second. Come on. to sleep. It got dark and he's simply... no matter. I can now enjoy a few moments of peace. I'm going to have to take a few more of your seeds, but I promise this is the last time. Let's go. As 
expected. No one here. My parents are in the throne room ruling the lands. Or rather, Mother is. That's a weeping willow. It appears to be so content it looks anything but sad. The willow is stretching its branches up high into the sky with glee. One part of the waterfall is already lying in its shadow. If it continues to grow like that, it'll shade half the garden. There are elf-made ponds and streams all over the palace ground. Their water's said to have healing powers. No wonder considering where it comes from. There are reeds and water lilies growing in the pond. Naturally, they were planted there. They don't grow in the wild so high up the mountains. I can't think of any use for a water lily, but a reed could come in handy. The spring brook emerges up there. It's still small here, but it becomes one of the largest and most important rivers in the woodland realm. That leads up to the throne room. Mother will be conducting the affairs of state with an iron will, whilst Pa leans against the tree of life, probably sleeping. There's only a little water left in the bird bath. Cheap Cheap always says that it evaporates quickly. I, however, think that the constant need to replenish the water is more down to his unbridled, joyous splashing and not insignificant body mass. A fairly small, unattractive tree. Huh! I'd like to see how attractive you'd look if someone disturbed you on the pot in the morning. You mean... Anyway, what could I do for you, my little beauty? The garden always looks fantastic, Arthur. Thank you. It's a girt load of work. People always think elf gardens are fabulous by their very nature. But you need a mighty good gardener. You have got green fingers. Ah, that's just moss, me dear. Happens if you spend all day grubbing around in the earth and don't wash your hands properly in the evenings. You tree shepherds do a great job. <laughs> tree shepherds? The trees just stand there. What do they need a shepherd? However, I quite fancy one of those shepherd dogs. Hey, Rex, do you want to be my shepherd dog? <laughs> nah, my darling. I'm a gardener. Nothing more, nothing less. Mother put me on a diet this morning, so that I'll look perfect for my wedding. Oh, everything has to be perfect for her. No such thing in nature, of course. Or rather, everything is perfect if you just let nature run its course. You tell that to Mother. I have, many times. She'd be very clever in some things, but very daft concerning that. Now then, she is the Queen. I'm old enough to be able to call a spade a spade. <laughs> Spade, gardener, get it? What are you up to today then? Got much on? Oh, the usual. You know, it never rains in the elf burrow, but the flowers need their water, so I water them every day. Ah, oh, the curse of good weather. <laughs> the weather isn't the only thing which isn't right. We've been here 30 years, and for 30 years we've had autumn. Time passes differently in the elf burrow, slower. Well, that's why everyone grows to be ancient here, obviously. But if we had a bit of normal weather in the usual seasons, oh, there'd be a lot more of a riot here. You and Father, you get along well, don't you? Ah, uh, no one understands more about nature than him, that's for sure. But I don't often ask him for help. Thinking has never got a field dug if you get my drift. He's just more of a theorist. Ah, uh, the mud on your feet, the smell of fresh earth, all that joy and life. And he's missing out on the lot by just sitting around up there and doing nubbit. I have to get on. 
Yep, got a bit to do myself. I just don't know what's wrong with that plant over there. Your mother got a whole heap of flowers given to her the other day from a fairy delegation. All of them took goodness, just not that one. Perhaps it needs a special type of soil or something. Well, anything's possible. If I don't think of something soon, I'll have to ask your father. He can have a little chat with her and she might tell him what's up. Um, if you're going in, it'd be nice if you didn't tell my mother that you saw me out here. Oh, you playing hooky again? My lips are sealed. I don't know the names of all the plants in the garden. Grandmother knows them all, which is probably down to the fact that it was her that gave many of the plants their names a few thousand years ago. Shite beerwood, sweat tea, dodder flower, fat hen, bistort, stink root. Mm. We no longer invite her to family gatherings. This is Mother's Mirror. It's said that you can see into the furthest corners of the land and know what's happening in every part of the world. At the moment, it's no more than a shallow bowl. The water's missing. Mother thought it was unseemly of the bees to build their hive in our garden. I don't think she could get used to the thought that she would no longer be the only queen here. It doesn't look very well at all. It's unusual for flowers to hang their heads in this garden. Normally they blossom in our good earth, not to mention the power of Arbor's green fingers. Hi, Arbor. Oh, Ivo. Have you found out what's wrong with the plant yet? Nope, I haven't. Everything looks proper. Earth is moist and nutrient rich. The sun is shining. Arr, difficult case. I'd quite like to smoke my morning pipe now, but uh, first work, then play. See you later, Arbor. See ya! Handy smooth stone, Arbor's sheep dog. 